This is Nick from whatisnuclear.com, and I just want to show you a little Neutronic scoping tool that I just developed. Let's go over to whatisnuclear.com, and you go to Reference, and then Neutronic scoping tool. And what you'll see here is a little core with a person for scale, and some shielding represented translucently there. And over here we have a K effective versus time curve that tells you if the chain reaction can be critical if K effective is above one. And then it tells you over depletion, you know, as you run this reactor for some time, it will go subcritical because it runs out of fuel and fission products build up around 1.4 years. This is, a little, this is extra cool because we have these little sliders where you can adjust the height and the little core height goes up and also k effective changes um, instantly and you can change the radius and you can see if you go to a little tiny core um, k effective goes way down um, and if you go bigger it goes up that's because more or fewer neutrons are leaking out the side and you can also adjust the enrichment at which point the volume stays the same but the k effective curve you know goes way up or way down all the way down to natural uranium and um, you can also change the power rating so if you want to like double the power of your reactor or if you want to downscale it way down the k effective is doesn't the shape doesn't change but the time does so here we run the reactor at one percent and it runs for 381 years. <laughs> um, you can compute all sorts of things from this uh, over here, but like the, you know, just based on this K effective curve, you can compute all kinds of useful information that I'll talk about. But yeah, it's, it's real unit cell calculations behind this. Very simplified, very approximate, but uh, you can really kind of eyeball a whole lot of detail about reactors just using this kind of thing. So I think it's really cool. So let me talk about a few of these. Maybe the most important one, uh, or at least one key one, is the fuel LCOE. This is basically just taking the net present value of all the fuel costs over a 60-year-ish life and dividing by the net present value of the electricity generated over that time. So this is one of those things where like, oh, you want your core to run for a super long time. Let's drop the power rating all the way down to 1%. But you can see that your fuel LCOE has just totally skyrocketed. Um, even though your reactor will make a bunch of power for 250 years, like you've blown out your, your economics there. So uh, the 100% for each of these is like a typical power density for this type of reactor, which right now is set to a light water reactor. So we also have the fuel cost. This just tells you for one cycle to buy you know this volume of fuel at this enrichment it would cost this many million dollars um, and then we have the power in thermal and electric this is again at the typical power density for the reactor that you've chosen if it's at this volume you'll be running at that power and that slides with the with the power rating slider here the fuel loading just again it's pretty straightforward. It just tells you if you have this much volume of this type of fuel at this enrichment, you're going to have this much heavy metal. And then we just divide it by megawatts electric so you can get sort of these specific uh, fuel loading. And then fissile is just that times the enrichment. So you can see there's 3.8 metric tons of uranium-235 in this core. The cycle length is uh, extrapolated or interpolated from this curve. So right in this case, it's pretty linear. And so it's okay to sort of extrapolate all the way down. I only ran the unit cell calc out this far, but it's doing an extrapolation. It gets a little wonky in some cases, but you can kind of figure it out. So it's sort of saying, you can see it just extrapolate and that just tells you when it goes subcritical. Um, the discharge burnup is another thing you can compute from this very easily. This just tells you how many megawatt days of thermal energy you're getting out of each kilogram of fuel. And it's a super simple calculation. Like if you know you're running at this power for this long and you have this many metric tons of fuel, well, you just multiply and divide and you get the average burnup. The average is you should pay much more attention to than the peak. The peak is using like a, a default peaking factor over a bare cylinder, which is like a cosine shape axially and the Bessel function radially. That um, isn't pro probably won't be this high. If you just run the core for this long, it will be about that. But many times you'll be actually shuffle shuffling the fuel a couple times within the cycle. Or if you're using like a pebble bed, the pebble will be 
moving through the fuel or a can do or whatever. Um, so the peak won't necessarily be this high, but it's just something to watch out for because you're material limited by the peak burn up. And uh, this tells you like how much of the actual energy you're getting out. The mining intensity is just using that, uh, that SWU calculator from before. It's just telling you, well, if you enrich that much uranium, um, and generate that much electricity, then this is how much natural uranium you have to mine, how many grams per megawatt hour of electricity generated you have. Reactivity swing is another important metric. This basically is just telling you how high you are at what your criticality is at first. So it's 48.65%. You can see it's 1.4865 up here. And this is something you have to watch out for because if you make it too high, or if it's very high, you have to have a control mechanism in your core that can actually compensate for that. And so maybe soluble poison or burnable poison, soluble boron, whatever, control rods. But like it can be pretty hard to have big control rods that can handle a huge reactivity swing. So just watch out for this. Shielding mass is just literally taking kind of the volume of shielding depicted in here and just multiplying it by the density of concrete. So you get an idea for like what your weight of shielding will be just baseline. And then again, based on that simple, simple leakage approximation, we have like how what percentage of the neutrons are leaking out the side bare unreflected core here so it's it's like since it's bare and unreflected if you put a reflector it'll get better but also um, you're going to add control and a bunch of other stuff to it so they kind of are going to balance out a little bit and we also give you the migration length which is kind of the distance that a neutron goes from its birth of coming out of a fission to where it gets absorbed finally by the next atom so that kind of gives you that tells you like it's amazing for water. It's so small. Um, water is really an incredible moderator. So let's see. You can also, if you want, and I don't really recommend this, but you can uncheck the cycle length auto button and just dial in your own cycle length. This instantly becomes unphysical because, like, oh, it's you, let's do a 60 year. Uh, cycle length but like it's definitely going to be subcritical before that but i put this in here for some weird scenarios like if you're in if you're breeding it gets a little bit wonky so that's just there to play around with but be careful with it you can copy settings to clipboard and share with your friends you know just paste it in the url and that'll just get the same settings so that's you know just for sharing uh there are three different reactor types so far i ran unit cell calcs for light water reactor hcgr from a benchmark problem and SFR from an old argon report. So you switch over here and that comes with a different uh, fuel fabrication cost, different fuel density. In this case, okay, the migration length went from, oh no, that was supposed to recalculate. It, it went from four to 17 centimeters. So um, we're gonna need a lot bigger core and or a lot bigger and a lot more enrichment to go critical, which is why HCGRs typically use HALU type fuel and uh, and generally have thorium breeding to sort of counteract the, the cost of the fuel here. And that's just because uh, there's a lot less heavy metal density per volume in a triso type fuel. So you do have like a little bit higher uh, dollars per mega hour on the fuel, but you get advantages in terms of safety and, and robustness and so on. So um, let's see, if you go to the SFR, this one's, let's take that down. You'll see it's like way subcritical. If, you're, if you don't have a moderator, <laughs> you really suffer on criticality. So you got to go up to HALU. And this is kind of funny. You can see it's like KEF is going up in this case because it's a breeder. It's like breeding plutonium. It is subcritical until you bring it up to maybe, okay, we can go critical at 11.5%. And now, you know, you can imagine the cycle length calc just doesn't make sense because like, what's it going to be? Some, so it just gives up. Um, <laughs> cycle length is, and it kind of has you at the default of uh, 2.8 in this case. So you can, you can go ahead and like, play with that, but you're going to have to do some more calcs to do anything meaningful with this. It becomes meaningful again when you go up to higher enrichment. When you go to like 19.5, you're much more of a burner now. You're no longer a breeder. And so having the cycle length be calculated kind of makes sense again. Um, so anyway, uh, I hope it's useful. I think it can, you know, really help 
you sort of get an intuition for different types of reactors. I think you can like, if someone publishes something that like our core is this big and it runs for this long, you can kind of fill in the details and estimate like, okay, what's their power? They're this much down rated. And so, and here's sort of their average discharge burn up. Whoa, <laughs> this is a, a kind of high burn up here. So watch out for that as well. Um, and also, I mean, if you're just like starting out with your core design, you can like play around with this to get a sense of where you want to start and then go run real Neutronics calcs to, to get the actual correct answers. Um, this is new. Um, it may have bugs in it for sure. Uh, so let me know if you have if you see problems with it or things that you think could be improved. Definitely uh, looking for feedback. Um, and I hope it's I hope it's useful. And also, like if we need more, we need more unit cells. I'll have to run some more calcs uh, for like a like a molten salt reactor or can do and some other things. So let me know what unit cells you want in there. Um, I can talk a little bit more about what it's doing. There's a little about the tool page over here. So you can click on this and it tells you just like what I'm hoping, what you can do with it. I've already talked about, you can type in these things and it computes these things. Um, there's links to the two codes that I ran, Dragon and OpenMC. So you can go, these are both open source codes. If you want to get the real physics, you can go and get Dragon, uh, Dragon and OpenMC. Um, here's the leakage approximation. It's just K infinity. Like I computed K infinity with the unit cell calcs and then I, took the the migration area and the geometric buckling based on the uh, the height and the radius of the thing that you input and that computes the the leakage down here so that's how we reduce k effective so again <laughs> super simple i'm not even using like extrapolation lengths or anything right now so there's plenty of uh, room for error and inaccuracy i um I did do some like benchmarking, like I said. So here's Dragon versus OpenMC for different enrichments. You can see they get pretty much the same answer. So good job, Dragon. The cool thing about Dragon is it runs in two minutes uh, versus seven hours on a PC for these cases. So Dragon's like an instantaneous, uh, very powerful and sort of esoteric and hard to use code. Um, oh, and I did some. I did. I actually ran some like finite cases as well, and I that's when I found that like when you go less than like 30 by 15 centimeters, it's way off. It's off by like 15,000 ppm. So that's why I limit the sliders to not go too far. They're within like maybe four or five percent for most of the ranges. So don't go too small. And again, uh, be careful when you when you uh, are using this. For HTGR, I use the benchmark problem from this paper. This is nice because it like they already ran Dragon and MCMP and they have like a K effect. So I was able to make sure that my OpenMC and my Dragon cases are also getting the right number that these guys got. And so I started out with that and did depletion on those. And, and here I ran just like a thousand uh, Monte Carlo particles per cycle. So it's a little bit, you, there's some noise in the OpenMC case, but you can see again that like Dragon and, and OpenMC are getting pretty much the same answer. So Dragon can do the double heterogeneity of trisofuel, very cool. And then for SFRs, it's just like straight up a 1.0 burner or break even core from ANL AFCI 177. And for that one, it's just a homogenized unit cell because in fast reactors, you don't care about pin level details. And uh, so, and I just use some open source inputs for that. So there's a couple observations and so on and references. So anyway, that's that's kind of all. Um, again, looking for feedback. Hope it's useful. And uh, let me know how you like it. Thanks. See ya.